one. Hobbs one. Hey, I can't. Jesus. Uh, don't uh, don't don't do the main. Do the hobbs. Do the oh, okay, sir. Check check. Jesus, oh, oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. We lay our crowns and worship. Oh, be lifted, oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay, we lay our crowns and worship. Oh, be lifted, oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship. Oh, glorious, oh, glorious God, we praise your name. Oh, glorious, oh, glorious God, we praise your name, we lay, we lay our crowns and worship. Oh, glorious, oh, glorious God, we praise your name, we crowns and worship, oh, be lifted, oh, be lifted, above all other gods, we lay, we lay our crowns and worship, oh, be lifted, oh, be lifted, above, above all other gods. We lay, we lay our crowns and worship. Oh, believe it. Above, above all other. Oh, we lay, we lay our crowns and worship, worship. Oh, glorious, oh, glorious God. We praise your name, we lay, we lay our crowns, Lord, and worship. Oh, glorious, oh, glorious God, we praise your name, oh, we lay, we lay our crowns and worship.
and you enjoy uh, the word. Amen and amen. Right. Thank you for joining us. Um, we invite you to create watch party, share this broadcast, and invite friends. Let them know that uh, we are having some great things coming up in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I'm joined by Pastor Lucy, of course, and we are teaching on the apostolic grace. And that is a matter that is in my heart, has been in my heart for some time, and I believe that God will minister to you in Jesus' holy mighty name. Now, of course, uh, we began sharing this earlier on, on um, last week on the apostolic grace. What is apostolic grace? What is a function? What's the purpose and what it does? And let me begin by reading Ephesians 4.11. And he himself gives some to be apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And verse 12 saying, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we... Till we all come to the unity of, of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, and says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body fit uh, the whole body joint and knee together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working uh, by which every part does its share cause its growth uh, of the body in the edifying of itself in love. And that's a beautiful scripture. I want to remind us what we already learned so far. The, we highlighted uh, five main uh, of yeah five main um, things about graces in a, in a form of grace we we you know we're talking about apostolic grace which is an expression we're actually talking about the expressions of grace only that we have narrowed down to uh, apostolic but we said earlier that there are five major expressions of grace which is apostolic prophetic evangelistic pastoral and teaching and uh, each grace is given for the building of the body of Christ and that all graces are from Christ and for his kingdom uh, we say that every believer should and can access the five different graces and their expressions. Uh, we also said, number five, none of the grace is sufficient to fully mature believers um, by itself. And talking about apostolic grace, of course, apostolic grace is given to apostles, is on the apostles. And we said um, there are several features about this grace and five of them that we're using for now. Number one is a foundational grace. When you talk about apostolic grace is foundation of grace and number two is a building grace and by building is to edify which also means to mature and number three we say that apostolic grace is a teaching grace is a teaching grace and number um, number four uh, is a pioneering grace so uh, so number one foundational number two building number three teaching number four pioneering grace and number five is a fathering from the word father is a fathering grace uh, we shared uh, uh, much about that, and I do not want to go back into much of it except to just mention by saying apostolic grace is foundational grace. Ephesians chapter number 2 verse 20 says you've been built up on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ being the chief. Ephesians 2 20, it says having been built up on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. And we say that this apostolic grace is foundational grace, is given, you know, to help build foundation, lay the foundation. And that foundation, obviously, is the foundation of the word. The foundation of the word, among other structural foundation. Again, of course, Paul says uh, concerning himself and the grace in him in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 10, he says, According to the grace that was given to me as a master, um, as a wise master building, I've laid the foundation and let everyone see how he builds on that foundation. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it, but let each one take heed how he builds on it. So, so apostolic grace is foundational grace and it's also a building grace. Paul says as a master as a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation. Of course, foundation and building, those two are interrelated. And um, we, will, of course, we'll keep talking about them. And by the, by the 
uh, and talking about building grace, we say it builds, it's a grace that God uses to build both the individual believer and then the local church or what body of Christ. So it's a building two ways. It's both building individual and then building the body of Christ. And we read um, Galatians chapter number four, verse 10, a very powerful scripture. You know, my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. My little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed. That matter of Christ being formed what we said is to install, you know, Christ into people. Of course, we are using that word install, technically speaking. We know we, know we are in technical install to get Christ formed. So, my little children for whom I labor again until Christ is formed you. And we said uh, last time that one of the major work of the apostle or apostolic grace is to build the nature of Christ in the sons. And Pastor Lucy, who is joining with me today, said uh, before you see her face, she said that the apostle must be careful not to just build himself in the sun, but others to build Christ in the sun. We were not called to make disciples unto ourselves, but we were called to make disciples of Christ. And then we see of Acts 4, the apostle says, let some Meanwhile, we will give ourselves continually, not one day, we will give ourselves continually to the ministry, to prayer and ministry of the word. And uh, that, that portion to the ministry of the word, that simply means is a teaching grace. Of course, all the fivefold uh, graces uh, also, of course, function in teaching grace. And no wonder you see very many men, men of God, and out, women of God out here, they will say, I'm an apostle and a teacher of the word. And uh, of course, um, is a grace. So it's a key feature. It's part of the key feature. So foundational building teaching. And today we got to deal with two areas, which is uh, one is pioneering grace and then fathering grace. And before we go into that, I want to bring Pastor Lucy uh, to say hi and, you know, make your comments um, and remarks, even as we do the broadcast today in Jesus' mighty name. So that means they don't lay their own foundation. They are not the foundation. The foundation is Christ Jesus. Uh, thank you. Right. Okay. We, we bless the name of Jesus Christ. So, <laughs> my goodness me. We bless the Lord. Anyhow, we bless the Lord. So, our viewers, we really welcome you to enjoy the broadcast today. That was Pastor Lucy, and we are, I think I'm not sure whether our sound was well, but um, we bless the Lord. We you you got to be hearing her as we do this. I, I I want to go back a little bit, Pastor Lucy, and mm. um, I've been you know reading and just trying to uh, look at what other people say about apostles, apostolic grace, and what is this apostolic grace? Mm. Because it's important. Because we um, we keep learning from others and keep learning from us. And um, today I want to read you a quotation by a, a man of God we honor out here called uh, John Eckert, talking about um, the apostles in one of his books. Mm. Uh, but before I do that, I came across this other one by John Ali, that apostles carry essential anointing that connects the body to the headship of Christ. When Christ ascended to heaven, he began to appoint more apostles. When Christ ascended to heaven, he began to appoint more apostles. Of course, you said, or we have learned already apostolic grace matures the saints by laying accurate structures in believers to follow the Lord. 
And um, God has not called us into independence, but into oneness. Hmm. And uh, all graces and uh, anointings. When you talk about grace, graces are, are anointings, mm -hmm. and they carry what you call delegated authority. Mm -hmm. Every grace is an anointing and carries the delegated authority. And why delegated authority? It's because um, while grace, you could look at grace like power, mm. but the power is not enough. You need authority. And um, I wanted to just read a quotation about uh, who are apostles. You know, um, that word apostles in the context, um, this is according to John Eckert. And so this is, this is borrowed material, you know. Uh, this man called John Eckert, he's uh, written a book called Moving in the Apostolic. Moving in the Apostolic, uh, Renew Books, that is 1999. And this is what he says about apostles. And um, even as we uh, continue on the apostolic, many of the envoys, okay, uh, concerning apostles, he says, um, uh, let me get there. The word apostle was used in the New Testament writers, uh, was used by the New Testament writers as a term used by the Greeks and Romans to describe special envoys who are sent out to expand their empires. Many of these envoys, so the apostles, the early usage of the word. Many of these envoys were military generals with authority to go into new territories and fight, if necessary, to establish the Greek or Roman culture in that region. They were also responsible for teaching and training in the new subjects in the law and culture of the kingdom. These envoys were given power and authority from the king to fulfill their mission. They were responsible for fulfilling their commission and were given everything they needed to succeed. I'm just quoting John Eckert. They were highly intelligent and gifted individuals, specially chosen for the task. They, um, they were sent to certain territories and church to subdue, conquer, convert, instruct, train, and establish the new subjects in the culture of the empire. So the point is this. The Romans would use that word apostle as to, repre or to mean envoy. So they sent envoys. And these were guys who were sent to expand territories, expand kingdoms. And no wonder we said the word apostolic is from the root word apostolos, which means sent one. And so as we talk about apostolic grace, I want you to appreciate this. A grace on the apostle. And these are men and women who are sent by God to do certain functions. And um, we said last time that they represent the headship of Christ. They represent the headship of Christ to the believers and to the church. And today we want to just spend some time and talk about the fathering role of the apostles. Apostolic grace as a fathering grace. Apostolic grace as a fathering grace. I wish to begin by reading a couple of scriptures that... About that. Okay. Um, uh, just for me and my neighbor, before yes. we move, because I know we will not come back there. Yes. I, I, I heard you say that um, the, the, the apostles, you mentioned the word ascension. Ascension, yes. Ascension. Yes. And I thought we needed, because I see the apostles of ascension and the apostles of the lamp. Yes. I don't know whether you can yes. clarify that. Because yes. it's the same person I read sometimes back who talks about the apostles of the ascension. I think those who are appointed and the apostles of the lamp, those who are with Jesus Christ or something like that. Okay. Maybe you clarify. Yes, of course. Because that's a word that needs to be explained. The 12 disciples are referred to as the 12 apostles. Yeah. And you see that in the gospel when Jesus is sending them in Luke chapter number 9, Luke chapter number 10. You see, and the list always, apparently always begin with Simon Peter. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and so the initial disciples of Jesus Christ are also called the apostles of Christ. And that's what has been largely referred to as the apostle of the apostles of, of the, the lamb, lamb. Yeah. the 12 and yeah. there are people out here who argue that there are no more apostles because uh, you know the 12 disciples were the apostles but those are what we are calling the apostles of the lamb the 12 apostles the word lamb remember jesus the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world but then you also see ephesians 2 i mean 4 11 and jesus gives some when he ascended he gave gifts to men and to some he gave to be apostles now, this is after he ascended. Of mm. course, if he gave gift after he ascended, then it means they are apostles after the accession of Christ. Mm. And that's what we are calling accession apostles. And by the way, why we bring this matter is because there are people who believe there are no more apostles today, that the office, the function, the grace of apostles ceased, and it's not correct. The apostles are there. The same way we appreciate the ministry of a pastor, mm. in that same way, the ministry of the apostle is here. Of course, definitely these things happen by revelation and by the grace of God. 
you know, this um, revelation is back to the church. It's been, you know, there is a huge reformation in church and reformation um, and, you know, going back to the word of God. And the last couple of years, actually, the church of Jesus Christ largely has come to appreciate the apostolic grace mm -hmm. and the prophetic grace as part of the fivefold graces that are present in our generation now. So mm -hmm. the apostles are here with us. The prophets are here with us. The evangelists are here with us. The pastors are not going on break. They are here with us. And the teachers of the word, they are here with us. And all these are five graces. And, and so we, we, so if that matter still is not very clear, I want to request our viewer, you still can write, you know, uh, do a comment, do as a question. We'll be glad to clarify the matter. The reality of the matter is that we know far much more about the pastor and the evangelist than yes. the apostle. Mm. And every time the, the issue of apostles come up, many people actually rush into thinking maybe this thing is a hoax mm. because there are very many false apostles. But the yes. fact that they are false apostles, it mm. means they are genuine apostles. Mm. The fact that there are many false prophets means they actually they are genuine prophets because yes. you cannot have a force from nowhere. Mm. You know, you cannot have a false currency unless there was a genuine currency. Yes. And, and so, so as we talk about apostles, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so as we talk about apostles and apostolic grace, so today we go into fathering raw. And we begin by saying we are actually talking about spiritual fatherhood, spiritual mm. fathering, mm. spiritual fathering. We are not talking about um, uh, something, we are not talking about, um, we're not talking about, uh, a masculine, you know, masculinity, so to say. I hope there is an English word like that. You know, nearly yes. counting are my neighbors, Masky, something like that. Yes. We are not talking about uh, maleness, but mm. we are talking about fathering as mm. a grace and as a function. Remember, mm. when you do with Genesis, uh, Matthew chapter six, verse nine, Jesus um, nine six, Jesus teaches the disciples to pray. Or the disciple comes to him, Luke eleven says, teach us how to pray. And Jesus says, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed mm. be your name. Now, how is God Father, yet he is spirit? It's because when you talk about fatherhood here, we are not talking about maleness. We are talking about the function. Mm. Otherwise, God is spirit. According to John chapter number four, God mm. is spirit. God yes. is not flesh. Yes. He's not bones. Yes. God is not physical material. Yes. God is spiritual. So when yeah. you talk about, when you pray, our father in heaven, what are we saying? We are talking about the fatherhood of God. God gives us a picture of himself as a father. Mm. And when we talk about the apostolic grace as a father in grace, we are simply saying is an extension or is a delegated authority, mm. is a delegated function. Apostles are fathers, not just because they are apostles, but because it's delegated to them. But before we go into all that, okay, are you adding up before we go to the reading of scripture? No, I'm okay. <laughs> no, I'm agreeing. By the way, this is a beautiful matter and a highly controversial yes, matter. When um, we talk about spiritual fatherhood, yes, some because, people begin to think, why don't you guys just talk about my pastor? Why don't you just talk about pastor and don't talk about difficult things and um, other people would think about what is all this? What mm. is all this new yeah. doctrine? Nothing yes. new. Mm. <laughs> Nothing new. In the same old doctrine. And by the way, it, most of these functions have been here with us over generations, only mm. that they were not given the same terms. Mm. And, and, and sometimes you just need to listen carefully and realize some of these things that sound like they are out there, like they are not even there. You find it's actually it's been taking place all along. Mm. Maybe it's a function. Maybe what you call what you call pastoral could be actually apostolic. Mm. All right. Now let's let's begin by reading um Second uh, Thessalonians chapter number two and verse eleven. Second Thessalonians chapter number two. Actually, let, let me show you a, a portion of scriptures here about um uh, something that I find very interesting about apostolic grace and apostolic ministry. And uh, Second Thessalonians, um, I'm looking at uh, for it in my Bible. It's not been removed. Is there? And I got it. Second Thessalonians chapter number two. And when I do, I wanted to pick uh, um, first of all verse one. This is what Paul was saying, verse one. Or the scripture says, For you yourself know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain. Um, who is this our coming to you? When the scripture say our coming, who is this our coming? You know, chapter one, you know, it begins by saying Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Saronic, the Saronians in God, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So this particular letter is written by Paul together with Silvanus and Timothy. Okay. So now he's saying chapter two, our coming to you, brethren, uh, you know what man of, um, you know that our coming to you was not in vain. 
But even the, after we had suffered before and was spitefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel of God in much conflict. And he, of course, he continued to say quite a chunk of things. But I like verse 8, what he says. Verse 7. Verse 7, he says, but we were... <laughs> okay, Pastor Lucy. You know, you tell me not to read the Bible like that. To skip. But for the time being, let me skip to verse 7. He says, but we were gentle among you. Right, let me read verse 5. I mean, I got to go back. For neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know. Um, nor a clock of covetousness, God is a witness. Nor did we seek glory from man, neither from you or from others, when we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. There is a great word. We did not, let me ask my guys to screen that for you, Second Thess First Thessalonians chapter number 2. I need you, my viewer, to see verse 6. I need you to see verse 6. It says, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy is writing and say, Nor did we seek glory from men, neither from you or from others, when we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. Paul is saying, I, Paul, Silvanus, Timothy, and the company, we would have made demands to you as apostles. In other words, we are apostles of Christ, but we chose not to do that demand. And look at verse 6, what is, uh, verse, six verse 7, it says, But we were gentle. Though apostles of Christ, we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes our own children. Apostles are like nursing mothers. I know mm -hmm. in Africa, apostles are chiefs. Apostles in Africa are soldiers. <laughs> apostles in Africa are strong guys, powerful. They have a apostolic voice. But Paul says, though we were apostles yes. of Christ, he says, we were gentle. We were gentle among you as uh, nursing mothers. Mm. Oh, my goodness. All, my, all the apostles in my nation, Kenya. I pray that all of us apostles can be gentle. Not um, glory-seeking, tough, uh, fire-breathing, cursing those who don't agree with us and uh, closing down churches and calling them all manner of names. No, we were gentle. I know I'm about to hit, I was about to hit a row nerve there and I'm not going that direction, but, <laughs> says, but we were gentle. We were gentle. We were gentle. Mm. And verse 80 says, how gentle are we so affectionately longing? Those are strong words. So affectionate, affectionately longing for you. That's love language. Longing for you. We were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives because you had become dear to us. Apostles of Christ operating like nursing mothers, showing love. The church was dear to them. These brethren were dear to them. Mm. You know, he said, please, us not only to impart to you the gospel, Mm. But we also imparted, shared our own lives with you. Mm. Look at verse 11. He says, as you know how we exalted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father mm. does his own children. Mm. And I like this portion. You know, it says, we exalted, which is to encourage. We comforted. We charged. You know, that is to teach you the authority. Mm. Every one of you. And we did that as a father does to his own own children. When you put that portion his own children, you begin to see affection again. You see, you begin to see love. You begin to see tenderness and gentleness. Because most time when you talk about fathers, I can tell you uh, sometimes it can be real misplaced, especially when fathers, when people misunderstand the word father for a boss. Mm -hmm. Because a father is not necessarily a boss. He's a leader, but not a boss. Mm -hmm. And there are many apostles who carry a boss attitude. You know, and there are scriptures you can abuse if you want. One of them is First Corinthians chapter number 12. He has appointed fast to be apostles. So an apostle can see themselves as a boast to the rest of the body of Christ, but it was not so from the beginning. Or oh, Jesus never intended that <laughs> to be. <laughs> Those are many things. All right, Pastor Lucy. Yeah, thank you, Pastor Jeff. You know, when you talk about uh, nursing matters. Yes. You no, know, it's very fascinating. Yes. Uh, because I think we tend to think uh, when we come fast, mm. uh, then... When we look like we are fast, yes. we tend to think that we are called to control, dominate, manipulate, manipulate. My goodness! But um, but as apostles are called and are, are, are not called to control. They are not called to to I mean have that negative authority um, upon the church, but to bless the church and have dominion over the devil. Hallelujah! And authority over the devil. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> So it is not to lord over people, mm. you know, it is to interact with them as nursing mothers. And um, to me, uh, this is a heart issue. 
you know, apostolic grace. This apostle, that this grace is a heart issue. It is a grace that is bestowed upon the apostle to raise sons. Mm. You know, when we talk about mothers, that uh, a nursing mother, that means there is parent parenthood yes. that is coming in. Yes. And therefore, it's a grace that is uh, um, bestowed upon the the apostles to raise um to to raise sons. And when we talk about raising sons, maybe Pastor Jeff, I say I, I go a bit further on that area, just a bit. Eh? You know, apostles as fathers, as Pastor Jeff is telling us, then they will need they are there to guide, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And just correct and protect people. And um, you know, with patience, you know, that's a nursing mother now. Yes. With, uh, with patience. Uh, of course, with power, because there is need to be power coming in, and love. Mm. You know, all that needs to be put together, and that's a grace. That's a grace. That's a fathering grace. You know, fathering, just as a natural father will nurture his family, bringing impartation on them as in the areas of gifting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, uh, some of my friends, by the way, have defined a father as a pastor of pastors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and by the context uh, of that pastor of pastors, they simply say this is a man who is fathering ministers. Mm, and mm. I, I want to read the introduction of uh, you know the Paul Paul writing his letter to Tim to Titus. Of course, Titus and Timo they are two big guys in mm. terms of I mean these uh, you know the the relationship of Paul and Timothy and Paul and Titus mm. is a very rich uh, you know rich relationship when you think about it. And Paul writes the letter to Titus, and this is how he puts it in chapter one. He first of all introduces himself as Paul, a bond servant of God and apostle of Jesus Christ. Definitely, before we are done with apostolic grace, somewhere we'll come into this point of being a bond servant because Paul, Peter, and most of these early apostles they would use that term on themselves. Paul, comma, I mean, apostle of of uh, a bond servant of God. Even Peter talks about Peter, a bond servant of Jesus Christ. And that is a very important matter, a bond servant. But as much as this is not the time we'll do that, but I need to say, when we talk about a bond servant, is one who is fully owned by his master, fully given out, fully serving the purpose of his master. A bond servant is from another Greek word there, diros. It simply means uh, uh, the, the, that servant that is owned you know that servant which is owned and in olden days they would even pierce the ear and put an earring on it uh, on that servant not it on that person who is not an animal <laughs> or that person about servant. anyhow so paul says i'm about uh, about servant and apostle of jesus christ according to the faith of god's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which um accords uh, which accords with godliness and then verse 2 he says in hope of eternal life which god who cannot lie Promise before time began. And then he says, But has in due time manifested his word through preaching, which was committed to me, committed to me according to the commandment of God our Savior. There you are. And he said to Titus, and he calls Titus a true son in our common faith. That's what we are calling fatherhood. Paul says, I'm writing this letter to Titus, and he calls him a true son in our common faith. And of course now he proceeds on to write to him grace mercy peace from god the father and the lord jesus christ our savior we need to we need to have said pastor lucy now when we touch the word fathers there are many people with a very negative uh, picture of a father because if somebody was raised by an abusive father and a crazy man out here they could think every that that word father is bad that word father is a very good word the word father is very good it's even and a I, strength is even a strength. Mm -hmm. And I pray for all the men who are watching us. Please, all the brothers, all the males who are in this forum today, I want to encourage you to consider very seriously having, creating that right image for others of a father. Whether it's to your biological children or to your younger brothers, siblings, and sisters, or whether to whatever, whatever. Fatherhood, this matter of fatherhood is huge, but it's completely um, disfigured. The sin that came into man in the Garden of Eden, among other things, they disfigured his father. So that when you talk about fatherhood, people, some people get a bit gist, gist about it. And mm. I can say, uh, there's a group or, a, 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 you know, some in the Christian circles who even don't like the, the even the term spiritual fatherhood. And not because, or, uh, not because it's bad, but because it's of their own personal challenges and what have you. 
you, I'm saying that because I like what Paul, you know, the first things Paul tells his son Timothy. He says grace. You know, that is goodwill. He says he talks about mercy. He talks about peace from God. And which God? God who is the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Jesus is the Son of God, you know, and our Father God provides <laughs> fatherhood to Jesus Christ. And Paul is saying, I am an apostle and I'm a spiritual father, I'm providing fatherhood, or I'm extending the fatherhood of God to Titus. And this fatherhood you're talking about is not terror, because I, I, I think the abuse of the graces of God has it, been so much in our, in our days that sometimes it causes the picture to be mad. So mm. he, he, he wishes him grace, he wishes him mercy, he wishes him for peace, you know. When a, a father, even a spiritual father comes around, it's not time to run around. You know, there's a picture out here that a father is a, is a consumer, never producer, is, um, you know, is a, is a man or a woman. When they show up, we run around and everybody held a skeleton trying to make sure everything is right and perfect is in place. And that is called honor in many circles. But let's not go to politics. Let's stick to the word. <laughs> so when you talk about a spiritual father is one who is, um, you know, modeling Christ and extending the fatherhood of God is a grace. And we are, what we are saying is, it's a, it's a prominent grace in the apostle. And Pastor Lucy, I want you to bring your thoughts into that as we begin to actually almost go to a conclusion. You know, I want to, uh, to, to this, this scripture, yes. Titus 1.4. I always like the story of Titus. Yes. And when Paul is talking about him or addressing him to Titus, a true son in our common faith, you know, and um, it's the same. We are say we are seeing um, Paul yes. in another scenario, saying, "I sent or I left Titus in Crete." Mm. You see, and the reason why Titus was left in Crete mm. was to bring order yes. to the church because he said, "Appoint leaders." Actually, verse five. Yes, says to appoint leaders. Yes, uh, yes, yes. For this reason, I left you in Crete that you should set uh, in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. You know, that's the apostolic we are calling, uh, we are talking about. And it looks like Paul um, working with Titus as a son, a true son in the faith. You know, working a true son in the faith, then Paul, Titus is able to walk into the same apostolic grace. Wow. You see, mm. and bring order. I mean, he's in Crete bringing order in the church, you see, and correcting problems, appointing leaders. Mm. And I think, Pastor Jeff, some of the disorders we, are, we see in church, it can be traceable because of in lack of fatherhood oh, and authority. A, that's already so huge, Pastor Lucy. Mm. Some of the disorders we are seeing in church can be traceable. Mm. You can trace it back to father. Yes, of course, lack yes. of fatherhood and lack authority. of fathers and, and poor yes. fathering. Yes, when yes, you I see people so. do, mm. as, let, let, let's speak a matter for example. When you see guys commercializing, selling mm. the gospel mm. plainly, I mean there are mm. people who are selling the gospel. You don't even need to be deep in the spirit to see something is wrong. Yes. People merchandise the gospel. Anything mm. you touch, they put a figure into it. Mm. When you touch a generational blessing, you put a figure. Mm. When you put a touch a generational curse, you put yes. a figure. Yes. When you touch a generational uh, joy, you put up a figure. When mm. you touch about uh, mm. uh, an anointing for the business, the marketplace, you put a figure. You know, mm. everything is in figures. Yes. Of course, we learned a huge chunk of that nonsense from it's America, it's and uh, right now it's uh, big in Africa. Everything you touch is money. Mm. And and, uh, and, uh, and even simple truth have to be given a very complicated terminology mm. so that we can put... Let me give you an example. I find a scripture which really does not directly talk about money. And mm. I wonder how many preachers use it for money. Mm. It's the most foundational, simple, the very foundational parable of Jesus Christ. Mm. It's a parable of the sower. Mm. As a man went to sow, a parable of the sower, a man went to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, some seed fell among the, th the thorns, some seed fell among the stones, and some fell, seed fell on good ground. Mm. And Jesus explains the parable. And he says, what is a seed? He says, mm. the seed is the word. It was never money. And I'm not saying money cannot be a seed. Mm. But I'm saying if somebody is going to use that parable, mm. they better be clear mm. that Jesus was not talking about 
15 dollars mm. as your seed mm. that scripture you cannot abuse i mm. mean if you use that scripture as you need to give your 15 um 15 well, let's good get good figure you need to put your hundred dollars that's good mm. man you need to put your hundred dollars for this revelation as a seed you know and uh, mm. because the soul went out of soul and mm. i'm a good ground mm. of course not that you cannot find a scripture to justify that but that's abuse of scripture and so what pastor lucy has just said which we we, we got to <laughs> you know begin to put a pose here is that much of the error much of the disorder mm. much of the what we uh, much of this uh, confusion we find in church can be traced back to fatherhood mm. and and, mm. and that's huge are we mm. now blaming the fathers not really so but we're saying that is an area we must look into again yes because we are saying when you say it's traceable to lack of fatherhood mm. and authority we are saying it can be incorrect fatherhood or lack of fatherhood or not the right fatherhood yeah it but, could be lack of fatherhood i yes, like that one yes it so can some, be lack of fatherhood some of us are what we are but but because we didn't have fathers yes others can be incorrect, uh, incorrect yes or corrupted fatherhood yes yeah because the child of a snake they say that somewhere in mombasa is a snake yes a and then it could be of also course, corrupted corrupted fatherhood. fatherhood you know because we said yes. uh, from, uh, from the other broadcast that uh, fathers or apostles now fathers yes build christ into the sons yes and uh, in the corporate body yes you know when we la we come to that point that we do not know that church is not about us mm. uh, and our needs, mm. you know, but church is about God, mm. you know, about Jesus Christ. Then that's corrupt, corrupt fatherhood. Corrupt fatherhood, my mm. goodness, you're making things a very con corrupted fatherhood. Mm. And of course, others is just mere rebellion. Yes. You, know, you, can, you can be trained the best way, but you choose, you're not going to follow anybody's instruction, mm. especially because you have a revelation. Let me tell you. I, I, when I think about the case of Paul, Paul was a great, he's a great apostle, mm, yeah. but, but, but he had to remain in check. Mm. And I find him amazing that even after preaching for some time, he came back to Jerusalem and he came to the apostles in Jerusalem to submit his doctrine mm. and his teaching to those, he says, who are th those who are of not, you mm. know, th or those who are cheap. Mm. And he met Peter and he met James, the brother of our Lord and the mm. other apostles and they had private meeting mm. and, um, and I pray that the apostles of our day, including Apostle Bishop Evangelist Pastor Lucy, I also hope that we also, <laughs> I hope we also, not I hope, of course I know we are also submitted to a father. Yes. And, and even are. that father is submitted to another father. Yes. And not only are we submitted to one father, we are accountable to one father, but we are also submitted to other fathers. Yes. Because the revelation is not given to one person only is given to the larger body of Christ and we bless the name of Jesus. We will continue with this matter. I'm sure questions are coming. Uh, you, you can almost be expecting somewhere along the way. Mm. Somebody will be asking, can ladies be spiritual fathers? Because many times we talk about fathers, sounds masculine. Sounds like men. Uh, mm. uh, uh, Pastor John is a, is a you know, spiritual father. Uh, but I don't know about Pastor Mary. Well, she's a <laughs> spiritual father. If the question comes up, we'll deal with it. Um, mm, 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 Pastor <laughs> Mercy. And we bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For now, we're going to our second section, which is interactive session. We want to find out what our viewers are saying, what our viewer you are saying, and what are your comments, what are your thoughts, what are your questions. Um, and we'll be able to address that in Jesus' mighty name. We're joined by um, Maxwell. we joined by a powerful man. He's a Waziri Maxwell, you know, uh, join with us. Uh, Maxwell, you well? Yes, yes, Dad, I'm very All right. well. All right. I'm doing good in Christ. Uh, God has been good to me. Uh, thank you so much for this platform. Thank you for teaching uh, this kind of a topic. Uh, it is very much edifying, uh, and we are all learning. Thank you so much. Apostolic grace, uh, one of the things I learned is that it is a fathering grace and that it can be extended wow that's awesome uh, even as we continue uh, allow me just to appreciate a few people uh, who have tuned in and uh, sending in their comments uh, and we shall be blessed let me see on your comments i can see mary macau is actually watching nicholas Ndirangu, you are watching i can see uh, javed niamat says praise the lord salam ji god bless you sir uh, God bless you, sir. Uh, Purity Njoki is also tuned in. I see Miriam Dirangu saying uh, she's seated and she's ready to learn. John Mayanyu, I can see many, many of you uh, 
Tabi John is also watching. And Kimadi, you are saying the foundation is in Christ. Let me check. Um, today seems like there's no uh, questions. Let me just appreciate a few more people and then we shall be going to the announcements. Adam Mushiri, I can see you are tuned in and you are being blessed. Mary Kinudia, uh, thank you for watching. You are saying apostles are like nursing mothers. Wow, that is awesome. I can see also um, Mushiri Dennis, you are watching. Uh, quite a number of you. Let me see. Christian Dungu, you are watching. There's someone called VG Sifa. Sifa is praise. You are also watching. And uh, Mat Matandis Maseko is watching. Wow. I can see all of you. Beth Wairimi, you are saying here. <laughs> you, are, you are tuned in and you are ready to learn. Teresa George, we are saying you are together. That's perfect and that's awesome. Uh, thank you all of you uh, for tuning in and for watching. Uh, I appreciate everyone. You are quite a number. I may not mention all of you, but feel appreciated. Uh, you are so precious. Thank you for tuning in and, and uh, you know, uh, learning together with us. Uh, let me just uh, uh, give you an announcement and then we shall be good. Um, we have a website. We have a website. It, it will be coming on your screen right away. It's called jeffgishuki.com. Uh, on that website, uh, you'll get a number of sections. Uh, when you interact with that uh, website, you will be able to uh, to learn and to interact. You'll get books and blogs over there, and I know that will be edified. We also have uh, a, a YouTube channel. Uh, our YouTube channel is called uh, Uzima Center Church of Distinction, and we actually upload uh, these messages uh, over the, the, you know that channel, so that. Uh, even after we are done, you can go interact, you know, search, and we learn a lot uh, in that YouTube channel. All our messages, uh, we, we put it there. So uh, uh, go and remember to subscribe and, you know, uh, press that uh, bell so that you can be notified every time we upload uh, our messages. So God bless you. Back to you, Pastor Jeff. Amen and amen. We bless the name of the Lord. That's all we had for today. We got to be putting a pause here unless Pastor Lucy is uh, doing a comment. I'm not sure. All right. Pastor Lucy is okay. Allow me to allow us to pray with you and be a blessing. We'll continue with this matter tomorrow. Please um, remember you can always uh, do your questions even after the broadcast. We'll be able to see your questions and uh, be able to answer you online. And also if you so wish to have us bring you those questions on board in the next broadcast, which is tomorrow, we'll be glad to do that and be able to share grace with you. Be free to interact with us and be free to let us know how God is also ministered to you and blessing you. In Jesus' mighty name. Now we pray, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for my viewers. I commend each one of them to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the grace of God. Thank you for the anointing that is given to the body of Christ. By this we grow and we are nourished and we are built up and raised up in the will of God. Right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that every of my viewer shall walk in the grace of God, walk in the glory of God, walk in freedom, walk in liberty, walk in health, walk in breakthrough and miracles in the name of Jesus. I decree me the hand of God be upon you. I decree me the will of God prosper in your life and I decree may you prevail in that which God has commissioned to you in Jesus mighty name amen and amen is always a joy and blessing to invite you to the lord and before we wind up this broadcast i want you to say unto us the bible says uh, what does a profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses on his soul and jesus christ already died on the cross so that you do not have to perish and the scripture is clear god so loved the world give us his son jesus so whoever believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life and god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that through him the world might be saved. And I invite you to open up your heart and make this prayer with me, even as you invite Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe I'm a sinner, and I open my heart to you that you may save me. I invite you into my life to be my Lord, my Savior, and my God. I believe you died for me, and I believe you rose again from the grave, and I believe you are alive forevermore. And I invite you and your lordship into my life. Write my name in the book of life. Give me a new beginning. Fill me with your spirit. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Having made that prayer, I want to let you know that Jesus has come to live in your heart by faith. And the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, is a new creation. The old is gone. And behold, all things have become new. All things are of God who reconciles us to himself. Amen and amen. I, I, I encourage you to uh, let us know of your decision to follow Jesus. I will be glad to mentor you and grow. grow. I mean, teach you the word of God. Also direct and lead you where practical to a congregation near you where you can receive more ministry and counsel. And that will be lovely in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That's all we heard from us. And uh, I want to close with these words of benediction, benediction to you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord give you peace. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified in Jesus' name. Till next time, bye-bye from us. You are watching Life of God broadcast. Brought to you by... Uzima Center Ministry.